Now, one thing I like to personally have is a lot of information up on my screen. If you're one of those people who likes to just work on an object and just be one with your asset you're creating, feel free to have a very large document. In fact, you can actually hit the tab key and that'll actually get rid of all this extraneous information if you're used to just using custom menus and stuff like that. So tab, if you even and if you accidentally hit tab and everything disappears, just hit the tab key again and everything will come back. However, I tend to have a lot of information on my screen while I'm working for just quick access to tools. So let's talk about docking menus. So on the right hand side here, you're going to see we have a tool menu uh, loaded up here. So if you actually click over here, that tool menu is going to disappear because the tool menu exists right here and over here. And actually, this isn't very good presentation here. Let me go ahead and move this window in. I try to capture as much as possible here. And you're going to see we have the tool menu here and you're also going to see a little white uh, dot right here. So any menu that's up here at this top menu, let's say we want to look at the tool menu and the stroke menu. So I'm going to take the stroke menu here. I'm going to grab that white dot and I'm going to stuff it over here on the side. So now I have the tool menu and the stroke menu. And let's say I want to grab the uh, render menu here. I'm going to drag it down here. So now we have all three of these menus. Now to navigate these menus, what you can do is you're going to see my arrow turns to an up and down arrow when I'm in the gray area here on the side. So we can use that and we can just click left click and drag up and drag down and you can see we can see all three menus. Now right now because we have the tool menu selected and we only have the simple brush selected it's actually a pretty short menu. The menus are going to be context specific in that if I choose the cylinder here all of a sudden this tool menu got a lot longer because there's a lot more options with the cylinder than there are with the simple brush. You'll also notice if I go over here to my custom menu, there's not a whole lot of options available. However, if we click this poly mesh 3D and go to my custom menu, and I have this custom menu assigned to a hotkey, by the way, and we'll get to that later, you're going to see a lot more options become available. So like I said before, menus are context sensitive. Depending on what type of object in ZBrush you have selected, it's going to show you more or less options for that object. And so right now we have a tool menu with no sub menus. It just has a bunch of buttons in it. If we click the uh, poly mesh 3D, or whatever else you have in here. Here's a primitive, here's a poly mesh 3D. We'll get to those in a second. You're going to see all of a sudden we have a bunch of sub menus. So each one of these menus underneath your main menu is considered a sub menu. Uh, just like when we were messing with the preferences earlier, you can click one open, like say we can open up subtool, and then we can go down here to geometry and open that up, and then it closes my subtool for me. If you want, you can also hold down shift and you can open up multiple uh, submenus here. And you'll also notice underneath the subtool submenu, there are more submenus in here. So if you hold down, uh, let's say hold down shift and open up split, you now have split options, merge, Boolean, remesh, et cetera, et cetera. So I can open up all of these and you're gonna notice these things start getting really long. And in fact, for a polymesh 3D, that's probably one of the more intensive menus that we're gonna be dealing with. So there's a lot of options in here. But we're going to go over all this stuff. Don't get too nervous yet. It looks like a lot, but it's really surprisingly friendly. And it'll be fun, I promise. But we got to get there. So let's keep learning. If you ever want to get rid of a menu, like, oh, you know what? I don't actually need stroke options over here. All you got to do is just tap that white circle right here. And it'll just go ahead and just get rid of it. So we can go get rid, rid of both these menus. And then we'll just scroll back up. And here's our tool menu again. Now let's say you do want access to, for example, take the brush menu here and we'll throw this down at the bottom. So now we have the tools and the brushes, but I want tool options available, but I also want brush options available to me and I don't want to have to scroll down every time. So what I like to do is use, use these dividers right here. So if I hover over in this gray area, you see I have an up and down arrow where I can click and drag and scroll through. Right next to that is a divider. And just like anything in the ZBrush interface, you can hover over it, it'll tell you what it is. And sometimes you can hold down control and it'll give you more information, like polyframe will give you more information if you hold down control, and also your hotkey. The divider doesn't give us too much more information. Uh, but what you need to do is, um, it says click to restore a previous position. If you double click, it'll close a divider. And if you double click again, it'll open a divider. So, for example, if we wanted this brush menu open and this tool menu open, at the same time, what we can do is we can go over here to the left, and I'm going to make sure you guys can see this. If I move my screen over, you're going to see on the left side of my screen, there's a divider. So you can double click this one. And now we have two areas. We have a blank area over here with nothing in it, and then we have a tool menu over here. Now you probably do have something in here. If I remember correctly, you guys probably have material or something loaded up over here. And again, you saw how easy that was. I just grabbed the material menu with the little white icon and just dragged it over here to my docking. And you can just leave that in there. If you double click it, it'll disappear. If you double click it again, you'll have your material up here. If you don't need materials, but you do need brushes, we'll go back to our brush menu here. 
and just drag that over. So now I have access to my brush options and my tool options and my canvas. All right, one more thing I want to talk about when we're talking about menus and submenus and their functionality is if we go up here to preferences, you're going to see underneath interface, there is no menu and submenu options because they're called palettes. So that's my mistake, but I kind of did it on purpose because I think it's a little bit easier to think of, okay, this is my top menu, those are menus, and then beneath menus are submenus. Uh, in ZBrush, they're going to be called palettes. So a menu is a palette, and then sub palettes are submenus. So I'm probably going to say menus and submenus, but I'm really referring to as palettes and subpalettes. So if you open up this options in here underneath preferences, palettes, preferences interface palettes, you're going to see number one, we have one open subpalette selected. So what that basically says is we have subpalettes over here underneath our menu. So if I click on geometry and then I click on subtool, it's going to collapse geometry or it's, for example, geometry and array mesh. It's going to collapse geometry and open up array mesh that's where that functionality is coming in. If you don't like that functionality, uh, or you don't like to hold down shift to open up multiple menus, you can go in here to preferences and turn that off. You're also going to see we have left tray selected over here. If you hover over that, you're going to see left tray is set to auto collapse. If you hold down control, it gives you more information. Essentially what that's doing is in the right tray, for example, I'm going to go ahead and close these submenus down. We have our tool option. I'm going to go ahead and select simple brush, make that tool menu a little bit smaller. And let's go ahead and drag, say, the render menu over here. So now when I'm going between the tool menu and the render menu, so I can open this sub, this sub menu here. Let's go ahead and open up one of these. You're going to see these things don't collapse. I can go into the render sub menu and we can open up a sub menu here. I can go back to the tool and open up a sub menu and they're both still open. However, over here on the brush side or on the left docking palette dock. If we say grab the alpha and drag that over, they're both going to start out open. However, what you can do is you can click the menu up here and you can collapse these down. So you can have a ton of menus over here and you can collapse them down. However, in the left side, if we open all these up, they're going to auto collapse these main menus. On the right side here, if we go ahead and drag a bunch of menus over here, you're going to see as we open them up, they're going to stay open. Let's go ahead and Close that down. So all three of these we can have opened up, no problem. On the left side, it's actually going to auto collapse these menus. And you're going to see that is because we have left tray selected over here. So just in case you saw that functionality and were wondering where that was, all of that is contained right in here in the uh, palettes menu. If you change any of this stuff, if we go, you know what, on the left side, we don't really need to have that auto collapsing. If you like it, you'd like it. If you don't, you don't. You can just turn that off if you want to. Always remember, you got to go back up here to config, hit store config hit OK, and then whenever you restart ZBrush, or every time you load up ZBrush, I should say, that functionality will be enabled. Now we can always go over here now, and you're going to see now we can go through here, and we can collapse all these down, and we can also open up multiples at a time.